Hey, good morning, guys. It's Drew here. Quick video blog. I haven't done a video blog in a while, but I'm in my house. I mean, you guys remember when I used to give um, video blogs from my penthouse in New York City, right? Yeah, I said, it's a difference now, huh? I, I had people, I had haters that were saying that I was capping, um, but I'm in my mansion right now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying this to flex or whatever, just saying this to say that God is good. God is good. God has directed me here, and God is good. All right? Give glory to the Lord. It's a Sunday. Um, but speaking of which, um, the intention of this video is not to offer strange fire, because I understand, you know, when you're not authorized to speak on behalf of God, and when you're not authorized to, you know, or, or when you spread the gospel in such a way that is not uh, um, relevant to the Bible, that is not accurate to the Bible, you're offering strange fire. You're 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 using the Lord's name and you're using God's name to promote something or to push something that the Bible does not actually state that God authorizes. So that's not the purpose of this video. But the purpose of this video is to, um, you know, take scriptures from the Bible and use them to explain, you know, how God expects us as Christians to operate, okay? Because a lot of people have adopted the liberal uh, um, Democrat form of Christianity, and those people are not, for the most part, from my opinion, those people are not true believers. They don't actively read the Bible. They don't actively practice it. They just take certain scriptures and use it for their personal purposes, to push their personal agenda. That's not what a Christian does. What a Christian does is they look at the Bible and they look at what God says and look at what God expects, and they try to adjust themselves to fit that mold. They try to change themselves to fit that mold. That means if you have an anger problem, you don't go to the Bible and look for ways to justify your anger. You go for you, you go to the Bible and look for ways to deal with it, to overcome it, you know, to overcome that transgression. If you have a problem with, 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 with stealing, you know, you don't go to the Bible and look for scriptures that you can twist into supporting stealing. You go to the Bible and you look for ways to overcome the demon of, of, of stealing. You know, if you have a problem with laziness, it's the same thing. We can really go into depth with all these things, but it's the same concept. The, pro the thing is, is that you don't use the Bible to justify the way that you think. You, you use the Bible to learn how to properly approach life and how to properly approach situations spiritually and with God. You use the Bible to learn about God's character. You, you use the Bible to learn about how you can become a better creation in God's eyes. Okay, it's not about using it to justify what you think. The whole point of being a Christian, the whole point of following God is humbling yourself and exalting the Lord and anchoring yourself to the Lord so that you may have some spiritual growth, you may have some spiritual fruit, and you can spread that spiritual fruit to other people, but you have to be anchored to and you have to follow God. You can't just read the Bible. You can't just make up your own stuff. You see what I'm saying? That's what a lot of people do. A lot of people you know, make up their own thing. And, and, you know, they're like, oh, well, everybody worships God in their own way. While they, while that may be true, there's a, there's a limit to that. You know, there's a limit to that. And I'll explain the sense that there's a limit to that in the sense that if you never go to church, okay, you never worship, like you, you never, if you, if you almost never go to church, let's say you miss church consecutively for multiple weeks at a hand, um, you don't pray with a with a prayer group. You don't go to Bible study. How, it, it, you as a human being, how is the word going to remain in your spirit if that if you're not actively immersing yourself in it? You know, you're going to get filled by what else is out there. You're going to you're going to get filled by the things of the world because by default, that's what you're going to experience most of the time. You know, when you get up and you wake up and however you get to work, whether you drive, whether you take the train, or whether you work from home or whatnot, or when you turn on the TV, or when you turn on your computer, when you turn on your phone, you're not going to be bombarded for the most part by messages from the Bible. You're going to be bombarded by messages from the world. So if you're not filling your spirit, and if you're not filling your mind, you're filling your soul with words from the Bible intentionally, you're eventually going to not be living in the word. You're going to be living in the world, and you're going to be subconsciously picking up the lessons and the morals and, and the, the practices of the world, because you're not living in the spirit. When I say living in the spirit, I don't mean that you're perfectly, you know, unable to be angered. You're perfectly at peace. You're perfectly clear, uh, next to God. No human being is perfect. When I say living in the spirit, I'm talking about 
literally waking up and trying to get close to the Lord, waking up and praying. And then after you pray, maybe you go about your day, um, go prayer before you go to bed, Bible study in the middle of the week or at some point of time in the week other than Sunday, then Sunday worship. Basically, you're spending most of your time living life in the spirit, honoring God, exuding glory to God's name. That's your main focus. In every, even though you're doing what you're supposed to be doing as your career, as a career person, as a married person, as a as a as a brother or as a son or as a daughter or whatever you are, even though you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, in everything that you do, you should have a mind of honoring the Lord. Am I honoring the Lord? Are my actions honoring the Lord? You know, and you know, there's going to be times when your actions are not honoring the Lord because you're human. But for the most part, you should be pulled back towards that mission of honoring God and living for the sake of honoring the Lord. If you don't, if you, if you choose to just live for yourself and all you care about is yourself, eventually you're going to implode. And the reason why is because eventually when you live for yourself and you're only anchored to yourself, you get stuck in this circular rut, you know, and you get stuck in this little rut of your own mind because your own mind has limitations. Okay, your own mind is not going to be able to do things that other people can help you do. Other people can pull you into different frames of thought, you know, and other people, hopefully when you're introduced to them and when they're introduced to you, they're coming from the Lord. They're coming from God because you can also be introduced to people who are demonic and pull you in the in, in, in the wrong direction. You know, so it's 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 complicated, but everybody approach it. A lot of people approach you know, their faith with God as if it's something that just comes second. Oh, you know, we'll get to it. We'll just get to it. We'll get to it when we get to it. No, God must come first. God must come first. Your worship of the Lord must come first. Your thought of the Lord must come first. God must come first, period. God is not something that you just, oh, put to the side and just like, oh, you know, I'll get to it when I get to it. God is something that must come first. You know, God has no equal. You know, and the fruits that come from the Lord, you know, God replaces, if you lose money, God replaces it. You lose a relation, God, you lose anything that you hold dear to yourself, God replaces it. God can give you a new heart. God can give you, you know, God is the source of everything. Everything. He knows us innately more than we know ourselves. He knows, God knows when we're going to face trials and tribulations. He knows the pathways that we're supposed to walk. He knows. He knows whether we're supposed to make that mistake or not make that mistake. He knows. So God should come first because he's the source of everything, okay? Now, as human beings, we have trouble doing that because, you know, we get distracted by so many things because we are partially of the flesh. You know, I have skin. I have, you know, I have, I also have a brain. You know, I have things that distract me from living in this, from fully living in the spirit. We can't fully live in the spirit because at some point in time, we're going to need to drink and we're going to need to eat. At some point in time, we're going to crave social interaction with another human being. Or we're going to crave sex with our wives, you know? So we can't, oh, it's difficult to fully live in the spirit, okay? But as much as possible, the spirit should be leading us. The spirit should be leading us. The spirit should be leading our minds and leading our bodies. Our bodies should be, should be answering to the spirit and answering to our minds. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if your mind and your spirit answers to your body, you know, as a man, there's a million women that you can find attractive. If, you're, if your body leads your spirit and your mind, you're never going to be faithful to your wife. You know, if your body leads your spirit and your mind, you, when you, the first time you think about, vi the first time violence enters your mind, you're going to engage in it. The first time something, stupidity enters your mind, you're going to engage in it, you know, because you're not being led by the spirit. You need to choose to be led by the spirit. I'm going to follow the spirit. I'm not going to just do what my body tells me to do. I'm not going to just do what logically is just logically sound unless, unless we're dealing with areas of logic. I'm going to do what the Spirit leads me to do. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to trust in the Lord. It's, it's a different lifestyle. It's a different lifestyle. People don't understand these subtle nuances, and they just kind of like overlook it because it's so subtle. And they think they make mistake of thinking that because spiritual matters are so subtle, they're not impactful or they're so weak or they can do whatever they want with them. But that's not the case. In, in, in any case, you know, for whatever reason, people don't understand these things. If you, if you ha operate in chaos and disorder, and that becomes your lifestyle for a long time, that becomes your destiny, that becomes your fate event eventually. 
if you always operate that way. If nine out of 10 times, you're gonna choose the most chaotic, the most disorderly form of conduct, you're going to fail in life, guaranteed. Because chaos and disorder are modes of destruction. When Satan wants to do things, uh, uh, undo what God, God, Satan can't create things. You know, all he can do is undo things. So when Satan wants to undo things and wants to damage people, what does he do? He disrupts the natural order of things. He turns things upside down. You know, if you want to pour water into a cup, you pour water into a cup right side up. You don't turn it upside down. When you turn it upside down, what happens? The water spills out. Okay. When people do things backwards, they may think that they're being edgy. They may think that they're being cool. They may think that they're being themselves. But when people do things backwards, they don't understand that inherently in natural universal law, doing things backwards means undoing them. When you zip up a zipper, right, that you're moving forward. When you zip down the zipper, you're undoing that zipper. You're, you're taking off the clothing. It's the same thing with order. Okay, these zippers are lined up in a certain order. So when you go up, when you go in a certain way, it closes. When you go down, it opens. Okay, that's what order is about. That's what patterns are about. If you disrespect order, you disrespect authority, you disrespect patterns, you disrespect things, you're never going to have success. Period. You, will, you, can, you can do whatever you want. You can do things your way. You will end up spinning your wheels because you're trying to reinvent the wheel when you can't. So look, I just say this all to say that read your Bible. Get close to God as much as possible if you're serious about the Lord. Don't just get online and just say, oh, I feel that God wants to do this. I feel that God wants to do that. Read the Bible. Study God's character. Be like, that's not consistent with what's in the Bible. You know, that's not con you. You read the Bible. Study the Lord's word. Study the Lord. Study the Lord's character. Don't just make stuff up because of how you feel. Your feelings are not God. Your, the feelings that you have in your heart are not God. And not every single feeling that comes into your heart is what God placed there. You need to be able to discern these things. And you can't discern these things if you don't understand the Bible or if you don't understand why God put certain universal laws in place. If you don't study God, how can you understand the things of God? You see what I'm saying? People don't understand God, but they just come up with all these things. I think just God is just whatever because it's so, because they haven't studied it. You cannot speak so confidently about that which you don't study, that which you don't read, that which you don't investigate. It's like people who talk about money but don't understand, but have never made, you know, have never made more than $100,000 a year. But they talk about money. You don't know much about money then, do you? If, 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 it has, if you haven't put it to work, if you haven't put it into action, how do you know about it? There's one, there's two steps. There's understanding something, studying it, and then there's also applying it and practicing it. You must do both to really reap the benefits of it. And that's all I got to say. Peace and God bless.